Welcome back. Our press preview with all those front pages coming up in a moment. But first, let's update you with our top stories tonight. Two men having been shot dead. One of them a Garda officer in an incident in the town of Omeath in County Louth. A woman also seriously injured. Forensic uh, investigation now underway. Two Britons said to be among five NATO personnel killed in a helicopter crash in the Afghan capital, Kabul. It is being treated as an accident. And thousands of people have protested across Turkey, mourning the deaths of 128 people who were killed in the double bomb attacks in the capital, Ankara. Security officials believe Islamic State was behind the explosions. So it is now time for those front pages in our press preview. And uh, Mary Ann and uh, David with us for those selections. Thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, the front pages, as ever, of all those papers, The Independent, which goes with those Turkish security sources, saying the investigation into the Ankara bombings will be completely focused, as they say, on Islamic State. Metro with the reports from Baghdad that the IS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi's convoy was hit by that airstrike. Conservative uh, elder statesman Ken Clark makes the front of the eye, describing Eurosceptic Tories as UKIP light who fear the modern world. Senior Labour figures telling The Times they fear that Jeremy Corbyn may be considering a purge of moderate MPs. Junior doctors threatening industrial action unless the Health Secretary makes more concessions on weekend working, according to The Guardian. Jeremy Hunt also on The Telegraph under pressure by being accused of withholding a report on the need for a sugar tax. Investment banks in Europe should consider merging to create a regional body to compete with US rivals. That's according to the chairman of Barclays making uh, that suggestion to the FT. And millions uh, should be able to boost their retirement incomes when a new state pension top-up scheme comes into force on Monday. That's on the front of the Express. Well, the Mirror reports the NHS is treating patients hooked on internet gaming, pornography and compulsing, compulsive shopping. Not necessarily all three at the same time. And the Daily Star leading with Strictly Come Dancing. Well, as we say, more from Mary Ann and David in the Wooding, uh, David Wooding in a moment. But first, let's just break away because uh, there's another story that could make the later editions uh, and perhaps a warning about late evening tweets. Our deputy political editor, Joey Jones, joining us from Westminster to explain. What's going on then, Joey? Uh, this is shortly after nine o'clock this evening. The Labour MP Helen Goodman uh, seems to have been reflecting on Jeremy Hunt's comments during the week at the Tory conference when he said that uh, British workers could learn something from their Chinese counterparts. And putting that together with the fact that Jeremy Hunt's wife is herself uh, Chinese, Helen Goodman uh, took it upon herself to tweet, if China is so great, why did Jeremy Hunt's wife come to England? Well, that has basically gone down like a bucket of sick, I think it's fair to say. Not just her political opponents, but many Many colleagues as well weighing in to say that this is not appropriate, that she's not playing the ball, she's not even playing the man, she's playing uh, the man's wife. And I think that if there's one reason why this has the potential to be more than just a storm in a teacup and actually to resonate, it is kinder politics, as Jeremy Corbyn has talked about, the idea that maybe the Labour Party is trying to hold itself to a higher standard uh, right at the moment, and uh, this sort of thing does not seem to chime with that. It's for that reason, for example, uh, that Tim Farron, the Lib Dem leader, a short time later tweeted, a terrible tweet from Helen Goodman MP, never attack politicians' families. I hope she apologises. She clearly missed the kinder politics memo. It's the sort of thing that is really grist to the mill to the opponents of the Labour Party but I have to say has many of Helen Goodman's own colleagues wringing their hands in despair uh, and obviously not anxious to see how Jeremy Corbyn might be pursued to see how he might choose to react to this particular uh, indiscretion on her part. We'll let you get on the phone to Mr Corbyn now. Joey, for the moment, thanks very much indeed. But let's see what the papers are making of politics because The Times is going with Mr Corbyn. Uh, Labour MPs... Fear purge by Corbyn's far-left allies. Uh, well, there may be a purge of others <laughs> yeah. by the morning as well. Who knows? Um, I mean, That's the, the, a the terrible tweet. Yeah. Uh, say, central central question is: uh, This is going to be a major test now of his um, discipline within the party as to how he handles that and the reaction from the party leadership. 
Yes, that's absolutely right. I mean, he is the he's the man who set his stall out as being, and he is a nice guy, Jeremy Corbyn. He's a he's a very friendly and polite man, uh, and he's talking about a kinder t type of politics. So it remains to be seen whether a he he does continues the same. Um, Delivery and PMQs mm. without all the bar yabu, and secondly, what discipline he has in his party, and the discipline that people are fearing in the Times well, is, is discipline about where they are on the political spectrum, not on tweeting, and I he needs to stamp that do, out. Yeah, I do think we need to be careful to say that this is Helen Goodman going off on one, not some kind of, you know, outrageous yeah, she's Labour member of the yeah. parliamentary yeah. party, though, making she, a public she comment. Is, but she's not making a comment on behalf of the Labour Party, obviously, and I imagine. Very quickly, her well, colleagues is have she, distanced is she, if, themselves. If she is a serving MP and said. she makes a public comment on such a sensitive issue, surely she has to acknowledge that that is I, representing oh, well, her political views. I don't think an MP think of any persuasion can say uh, all opinions my own. No, uh, they no, are I part don't mean of a party. That. I mean, yeah. this doesn't reflect on um, Jeremy Corbyn's. Um, you know, control of his own party. I don't think well, this it, is yeah, one. Well, it will do person. according to what he's going to do about it. I guess that's the question I was posing. Right. Um, well, an MP was uh, was sacked from the maybe. front bench. You may remember during the general election for this snooty tweet about a white van man yes. flying a, yep. uh, an English flag. Yeah. Uh, Emily Thornbury. Yeah. Emily, yeah. Emily Thornbury. Yeah. So, however, let's let's just concentrate yeah. on this particular issue as well on the front of the Times. Let's just move this across. Uh, and this is basically what. Well, I mean, they've they've they muttered about this since the election that you know there was going to be a purge. Still hasn't happened though. Is that right? It hasn't happened. I think um, the 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 hook that they've they've attached the the fear of the purge onto this time is that there's um, a, an organisation that has been named Momentum that was part of the essentially the framework of the campaign to, that got Corbyn into uh, his position will be continued as a grassroots left wing, left of left, um, kind of campaigning uh, body. Uh, and the, the argument is this, this is very left. Um, is there, does this go hand in hand with a purge of the more moderate Labour MPs? Is this what Corbyn should be doing or should he actually be spending that energy in uniting his party and making this a kind of a, a central... Yeah. Although it, it does, uh, central point, cause. does point out there's also this group Progress, a Blairite think tank, which is also linked to the Labour Party. Yeah. And I mean, all, all the political parties have these mm. sort yeah. of but there, there, there are existing there are existing, no, the there are existing groups for the left and for the right of the party. I talk to members who are in all of them. It's the creation Fabian of a, society. It, well, of course, the yeah. Fabians. Yeah. It's a creation of a new one which is, is causing alarm, particularly among MPs who are privately saying to me, you know, we think that the next salute is that all these flood of members he keeps talking about who've joined, obviously, to the left because they've, they've voted him in, will then take over the constituencies. And if they don't tow the new left wing line, moderate MPs who want to say, uh, have airstrikes in Syria or other yeah. more moderate uh, policies. What well, they'd be deselected? De they, they will be. Well, you know, yeah, moderate they will policy. be. Well, mo moderate, moderate. Okay, sort of moderate. Good example. Oh, all right, so. not a good example, but don't don't toe the line, the the hard left line mm. of Jeremy Corbyn. That that they will be deselected, um, and that's that's the fear. And as you see, um, Mary Cray saying the only grassroots movements that I ever wanted to join was the Labour Party. I feel fail to see why we need a new movement. And David Blunkett is is drawing uh, parallels with the militant tendency by calling it uh, a party within a party. Which we remember was Derek Hatton yeah. and the, the big battle. We'll with see what the, they did to with, Labour with, and with to Neil their Kinnett. city. Yeah. The, the thing that I, I do understand in terms of perhaps there is a need for a new movement is to capture that energy and that sense of change that was with us in the, the kind of wider politics in Britain that was being discussed you know, at bus stops and over dinner, dinner tables. And well, the, the SNP and then Labour and the fact that of grassroots reaction. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. And now it's, you know, September, October and everyone's settled back into their Westminster bubble and, you know, it goes back to normal and everyone has a little bit of a crisis over whether we do or don't bomb Syria. And you go, oh, well, that's what the Sooty people in Westminster and they don't listen to us. And, and there's this big division of the working people don't get listened right. to okay. and other people make the decisions. And... To, to, to try and maintain the momentum of that doesn't have to be the way. I can understand that maybe you do want a campaign that... Meanwhile, that um, international stories making the front of the independent. Turkey blaming ISIS for Ankara bombing, but as we've seen today, the reaction in 
Turkey itself is that the government is being blamed there for preventing this attack. 128 killed uh, is the latest death toll. Yeah, th there's a bit of a blame game going on here, but it's quite clear the death toll's now reached 128. Um, um, and the, it, the, 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 the details of the attack are very similar, striking similarities to the uh, suicide attack that took place in July uh, in another part of, uh, of the region. Which also killed pro-Kurdish yes. um, yeah. campaigners. And again, this, this peace rally, as it was called, this police a peace march, march. pro-Kurdish. And that's obviously which has got some people concerned as, as neutral observers. How come it's the, it's the pro-Kurdish groups that are being targeted in these explosions? I think the, the, the people who were out marching in Ankara um, were also lobbying the government to stop targeting the Kurds. And, and it was very much a, an essence of, of peace mm. rather than a partisan march. Um, I th the thing that really upsets me is that if this was the work of ISIS, fighting the government in Turkey is doing their work for them, because that's exactly Which be their part aim. Of their calculation, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. undermine the democratic process, undermine public confidence in government, and then in we go. We go into those cracks that that are created by the vacuum that is created. Exactly, yeah, yeah. and and all you need to do is. You but know, as, as we see here, these, these pictures, I mean, these protesters, their, or their anxiety was just to remember those individuals who, who were killed in that explosion. And um, I can understand the mm. anger and the mm. confusion and the sense of powerlessness, but that is the moment when you have to engage in a democratic process and okay. really support, you know... And yeah. that's what you see in this country. Usually both sides come together when there's... An idea. attack from the outside, yeah, exactly. I think so, yeah. yeah. Telegraph, front page. Minister accused of sugar tax cover-up, and it is Jeremy Hunt, the health secretary, uh, hence my awful quip about helping the medicine to go down. I it was a great quip. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> um, however, this is suggesting that uh, there's a furious row with an MP, Dr Sarah Wollaston, head of the Commons Health Committee, who said that there was a refusal to disclose a review on how to reduce the sugar intake by, or uh, well, basically looking at a sugar tax. Now, we've heard about this on... Soft drinks, for instance. I think Sarah Wollaston's quite keen on a sugar tax. Um, and Andy Burnham, when he was um, Shadow, Shadow Health Secretary, Health, yeah. was quite keen on, for instance, reducing the sugar on uh, certain uh, breakfast cereals for kids. Um, but there's this report from Public Health England which apparently uh, says we should have a sugar tax. And Sarah... Well, no-one knows. Well, well... It, it, That's the thing. It, it was yeah. supposed to be published last July. But it's not been published. And it's I, been buried. I can Why assume, has it been buried? I can Jeremy assume it Hunt says we will have... A, I, I assume it says... That, that we should have a sugar tax. Common sense suggests that if you tax a thing that's really bad for children... Yeah, although it, ref it reflects there that Tam Fry of the National Obesity Forum says that David Cameron has already flatly and rashly rejected such a tax. I mean, is that, yeah. now, that could, a fair comment? Could it be possible that that has something to do with why Jeremy Hunt might want to try and bury it, this It might report? be the reason, yeah. I, I can't mean, think why. The, problem, the, the, thing, the thing is that we know that the Conservatives are opposed to a sugar tax. They take the view that the only way to do it is not by... Uh, taxing yeah. people. And we do remember what happened yeah. to the pasty tax. Well, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> as a quick Which might, might have persuaded them quickly. Yeah. Uh, OK. Yeah. Still to come, which MP has been accused of being an internet troll? Discussing that in a moment. More politics coming up. Just to exercise it. More from the papers with Marianne and David, with the Daily Mail just having come in, with uh, quite an extraordinary story about Facebook, uh, which says that the web giant paid £4,327 in tax. Uh, that is for the whole company last year, uh, as it indicates there, less than the average UK worker who would have paid more than £5,000 in income tax. Um, we're just trying to work out how <laughs> they've managed not thumbs. to pay that. And basically what it says is that the company's 362 UK staff... Um, Basically, they brought about an accounting loss last year, 28.5 million, because 35.4 million was handed out to the workers through a share bonus scheme. Well, I don't think many Facebook users will be reaching for the like button on this one. Um, See what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> but how did they do it? Uh, it's, a, it's an American owned company. Do you remember um, that it was the same with the coffee giant Starbucks? Yeah. Um, Can and you shift a... losses and profits between different. 
national international Well, I don't arms. think that's what they're suggesting no. is happening this here. Is just but basically, it's, it's an accounting procedure where they've basically made a loss last year because of the money they paid through the share bonus scheme. So then should the uh, 362 UK staff not all cash in their bonus scheme? Ah, well, maybe shares. that's when they get taxed. That's maybe what Facebook would indicate. That's when the tax is going to get paid. Ah, so and when so they, when the they, workers won't. Yeah, so maybe yeah. we haven't had both sides of the story on that. However, uh, very interesting story, and uh, we'll see what's on the inside page when they arrive a bit later. It's somehow cunning and appalling, isn't it? Mm. Uh, you may say that. I couldn't possibly comment, and we'll <laughs> see what Facebook say, because there's no comment from them at the moment. But clearly there is another side to that story. But The Guardian, meanwhile, we're going back there, because we were discussing... Jeremy Hunt with the sugar tax. There's a story on the front page uh, where rank and file junior doctors have warned Jeremy Hunt that he must make further concessions on contracts. And we saw them marching at the weekend, didn't we? Mm. Isn't it incredible to see doctors marching on the street? And they're so angry. They're so, so angry because not only do they feel like they're being unfairly maligned, they're being accused of being unprofessional, which I think is an absolute travesty because our doctors and nurses are amazing. And we should be proud of them and Yeah, them. but there may well be many patients saying, well, do I really want my doctor to go on strike when, you know, the Hippocratic Oath says, do, do no harm. I don't think many doctors want to go on strike. Yeah. I, I well, genuinely think this is such alien that territory happen. for them. But there's clearly a lot of talking to be had between them and yeah. Jeremy Hunt. Um, and, and they're quite clear that they're going to go ahead with this seven-day NHS, which I think is a good idea for, for the punters that we can well, have a Well, it is a good idea, NHS. but it only works if you have the funding to extend the yep. service, because otherwise you're saying, we've got the same pot of paint and we're just going to spread it really, really thinly. And obviously that's going to be fine, because things don't get missed when you're overworked. And well, staff, let's, 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 be, let's be clear here on the specifics. Jeremy Hunt's indicated he was prepared to reconsider the plan, and basically that was to reclassify working on Saturdays between 7am and 10pm as part of the normal working week for which they would be paid the standard rate, which actually applies to a lot of other workers it across to me Britain. And you, no yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, most people. So, work, work yeah, there is that. this question: Why should doctors be treated in a different way? just for working on social hours. You know, that, that I, surely comes with the territory. I think it's, it's the historical precedents that have put them into this situation, and so it's not that... Well, they and contractual agreements. ..that yeah. they think that they ought to be paid more for Saturdays because Saturdays are special. It's just that that's right. how a normal doctor's salary is broken down. So if you say, OK, we're going to recategorise Saturdays, what you're actually saying is take a pay cut. Because most doctors, especially junior doctors, well, work loads more hours than they're contracted yeah, no, that, to. That's, that's a different question, then, isn't it? That's the difficulty. And so they're yeah. saying, we're working this but, many what, what, what hours and you're giving us fire, 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 um, okay. fire fighters do it. I don't think doctors do it. mind working Saturdays. No. Let I me, think it's the, want more money for it's it. the implication. Let me move on. No, they don't want less money. Uh, I'm trying to reload. And there it goes. Right, we have got the right page. That's page nine of The Times. And it is Diane Abbott... Um, who I'm going to reload to try and move it across. It's uh, not playing... Ah, oh, here we go. Uh, she's an internet troll, according to Labour MPs. John Woodcock. Now, this is, this is this back is to the... This second, sort of, yeah. second yeah. internet, tr internet Labour... They should stay off Labour. Labour. Well, I mean, they, need, they? they should go for, for trolling lessons or, or Twitter <laughs> lessons. Or Twitter lessons. Um, Twitter uh, trolling. Yeah, this is, again... Uh, we, we, we heard one from Joey earlier about... Uh, uh, a Labour MP who was, tro who, was tr who was making well trolling, I suppose trolling is saying is, is being nasty on in, on Twitter. What about Jeremy Hunt's wife. <laughs> well, mm. So Diane Abbott goes on about the the Syria vote. There are 50 uh, Labour MPs who are ready to vote with the Conservatives in favour of airstrikes, humanitarian aid, and uh, diplomatic moves in Syria. And she's uh, put up a thing on Twitter, a post saying. Um, Something that military com uh, s components has no place. Uh, oh, sorry. She's responded to what what the one of the MPs, uh, Joe Cox, has said. One of their MPs mm. and said that it's sad that Labour MPs want to support Cameron in his long-held desire to bomb Syria. Well, John Woodcock immediately hits back and says uh, she's a sec shadow secretary of state for international development and not an internet a troll. troll. Right. So he slapped her down quite firmly. Ban all MPs from Twitter, yes. maybe. That might be the cause. I don't trolling. To be fair, it's not right. trolling, although well, it's, 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 okay. not, it's not. Anyway, listen, I'm just going to finish. Uh, hats off to that man. Or oh, it's actually hats on. Um, isn't that a great Only one photo? Of those men. Hats with off. with um, yeah. the sort of uh, Vladimir Putin adopting the Bond villain pose there, it, with Lewis Hamilton with local. his hat on, having won the Russian MP, uh, the Russian uh, Grand Prix, 
and it looks as if Mercedes have got the constructors' title as well as a result yeah, of that. Yeah, so he's so. won more Grand Prix than yeah. Ayrton Senna. Pretty impressive. Thank you for your selection. More than half an hour. Still ahead. Civil set. Civil Welcome service. back to our press preview with Mary Ann and David getting their papers in order. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> no. I'll press the button for you instead. Okay. There we are. Page one of The Independent. Uh, with a great photo of Vladimir Putin and Lewis Hamilton, who has won the uh, Russian Grand Prix, and Mercedes has got the Constructors' Championship. Um, and Vladimir Putin looks rather happy what about it. He sprayed him with his Apparently champagne. What, it's Russian it's champagne. champagne. Yeah, yeah. yeah. vodka, wouldn't it? But yeah. it would. It, oh, there is Russian champagne, yeah. though, isn't there? It's just like a sparkling wine. But, <laughs> however, what you are concentrating on is below that. I don't know what's happening. Uh, senior civil service oh, is like go. a snake okay. pit. It says here, uh, this is um, oh, at the top of the, the civil service, the um, first division, as they call it, a study carried out by the human resources director of Tesco, no, no less. A former. All oh, right, former. Former. Yes. Former. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a, a report has been um, uh, published to say that there's an unnecessarily hierarchical structure. That uh, oh, top civil sorry. servant. Sorry, let's let's move um, that back again because that's there we go. That's the inside page, right? Oh yeah, with okay. all the uh, um, comment. The, the top civil servants are care more about process and hierarchy rather than results. And actually, all these private sector um, troubleshooters that were brought in yeah, to yeah. modernise yeah. are all leaving because, because they, it's they can't so change appalling. The and there's turf wars, there's budget wars. They can't get the job done. And the, the system is so intractable that the only option for them is to go. Who would have thought the civil service was so exciting? I mean, it looks at a bear pit, a snake pit, bullying, macho culture, poisonous. uncollaborative, poisonous environment. Mm. Sounds like well, that's newsroom, doesn't it? <laughs> <No. laughs> I think it's... It wouldn't last five minutes in a newsroom. No. Um, but, I mean, is the suggestion that this is because of, you know, the so-called career civil servants who've been there since the beginning? I think... It, also, for me, suggests that the um, Tory approach to kind of parachuting in private sector people to sort out public services and to streamline them and to make them more, you know, um, goal focused doesn't necessarily work because actually you need change from the bottom um, and it might all come a, come a cropper with their big um, infrastructure projects. Yeah. We have the same problems, we have the same computer tech projects is, that are is, going is into Is it true to say that some of the everywhere. politicians find the same problem with the civil service? Everybody I've spoken to, Tony Blair said it, David Cameron said it, they've all said it, um, that delivery is the big problem. They, they come in with their policies, whatever party they are, and they say what they want, and they change it. It's very much like yes, prime yeah, minister. I was going to say yes, yes, yes oh, yeah. you can't or possibly do that. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and most of the people who work in the civil service have, uh, have come straight from school or university and ha don't have any other background in the outside world in private sector. Mm. And I think some they're bringing in more high flyers from from the outside, and I think that's where the the issue is. But it, now it but seems the high flyers are all. They're flying out again. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's uh, head to another inside page now, which is page 10 of the mail. Two stories here. First of all, this chap, uh, who's, well, he's rather handsome, but not all people think that. Uh, this is the reprieve on what will be, or what was designed to be, the first cull of urban foxes in 30 years. Cancelled yeah. after pressure from animal activists. Uh, so, Hackney Council in East London. Um, said that there's a growing urban fox population. It had reached a, an unacceptable um, level. It was putting people at risk. And so they were going to do a, a humane collection. So they, they trapped the foxes in humane boxes and then euthanized them. And um, it's been disrupted uh, to the point where they've had to uh, withdraw the plan because of animal rights activists. However, it's reflecting here that the, the concern was because of attacks on deer in a local park, presumably by the foxes. So what mm. would the animal rights activists say about the deer? Who knows? Yeah, it's, I'm it's... not one. Well, yeah. What do you think I, I about mean, foxes, well, I, well, if my animal-loving daughter is, is uh, watching this, she's not in bed, um, she should switch off now. She, <laughs> likes, she thinks they're all cuddly little animals, you see. Uh, and a lot of people do like that. They, they, they look cute, but they are quite... Um, 
dangerous uh, and aggressive creatures. Well, and, in, in uh, urban environments, uh, yes, yeah. in well, they're they're not very mange, they and carry mange. We've, we've and, carried yeah. some stories of, of them attacking babies. You know, I mean, very, very rarely. Well, rarely, very, yeah. very, very rarely. Well, we're, we're not suggesting that we should call cows and they kill no, 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 people no, no, every no, year. No, I'm not saying that, but but, no, but they are. They, beef, they, though, don't they do. They do cause quite a lot of damage, but. As, as it says here, that they've, they've called it off because the animal rights activists have, um, yeah. have put enough pressure. The thing, okay. that, the thing that worries me about that is that um, you've got, a, you know, an unhinged, potentially, group from, from nationally, drawn nationally. They're not necessarily local people saying, hang on a minute, the foxes in our local park aren't a problem. And if the council's policy was well thought through, they should pursue it, because mm. that's what the council is for, to say, well, we've heard your... your um, yeah, concerns. however, it's saying that These the RSPCA is welcome the council's decision. So, uh, Interesting. In fact, on the end, 14% of the total UK foxes are now in urban environments with 10,000 living in London. Yeah, it's like everything all moving into yeah. the metropolis. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's that um, okay. superheated sound. Times, piece. page four. <laughs> oh, so actually, just want to reflect on this one underneath as well. Mm. This is town halls being told if they don't drop plans to build more homes, the government will do it for them. Yeah, this is the, the government's plan to build more houses. We need something like 250,000 new houses building by 2020 mm. and a, a year. And pr the Prime Minister is saying now that the councils aren't doing it quickly enough and if uh, about one in five councils have not drawn up right. any plans, if they don't do it within two years, okay. he's going to do it for them. Right.